Welcome to Charts Today, my name is David Linton and today's edition for Wednesday the 23rd of October comes to you from London and uh, we start by looking at the dollar index recovering a little bit, we see the bounce here on the daily chart last couple of days we've seen a little bit of resurgence in the dollar just moving into short term bullish territory on the uh, 60 minute chart but not quite there yet uh, remembering this is the long term, the medium term and the short term picture um, and these are charts are tracking my movements on this uh, list of stocks and instruments which is from um, Thomson Reuters ICOM. So we look at the euro and the euro is actually sinking slightly, that stronger dollar uh, coming through. Um, but the euro has had a very strong month indeed, weak dollar, uh, strong euro in October. And if we look at the yen, the dollar yen has turned a bit bearish. So the yen is looking stronger than the dollar and we're seeing that just short term sell off there. Uh, sterling actually giving up some of the gains. We've had an amazing couple of weeks on sterling on the hopes of a Brexit deal. And we're just rolling over into possible short-term bearish territory there. Um, no big downside target, so don't expect any big sell-off. We do still have big downside targets hanging over us, of course, but uh, sterling has uh, really recovered on the hopes of a deal. And looking at um, <coughs> sterling against the euro, we see much the same picture. Uh, sterling just weakening slightly this morning, but has, again has had a real jump uh, over the last week or two. Against the Swiss franc, sterling holding on as well. Uh, against the Aussie dollar, um, also just holding on. Bitcoin, we're seeing below $8,000 this morning. We talked about this range yesterday. Uh, we've, we've fallen out of that range now, so we are short-term bearish, medium-term bearish. And actually, the long-term chart is probably still bearish as well. We never quite got uh, convincingly through on the lagging line. So um, it, it, it looks down, like downside potential for Bitcoin. We've got targets to 7.8, 7.5, uh, and one here that's not activated to 6.8. So... Uh, it's it's looking like these targets will um, become lower. Uh, the, UK, uh, the US stock market last night, the S&P 500 index was down a third percent, just trying to break to new highs, but can't quite get there. The same with the Nasdaq, just can't uh, break to those new highs. The market's still nervous on trade wars, uh, but the, we're, we're testing resistance rather than testing support. So uh, that does mean we're knocking on the door of new highs, and we've just got to uh, wait for that to happen. But it looks like with the target and everything that we're seeing, it does look like we will see new highs in the market. The Russell 2000 index, of course, is lagging that and it is still bearish on that long term chart. But medium term has turned bullish and the short term is looking better as well. So it does look like even the Russell will um, run to new highs eventually. Uh, the uh, the futures this morning, the S&P futures down 0.5%, the Nasdaq E-mini down 0.2%. So it does look like the market will open slightly lower in the US. And the FTSE 100 index we're also seeing um, is uh, up this morning. It was, it was up this morning, but it's just sitting um, at f fairly little changed. Uh, again, just market uncertainty hitting a little bit there. Uh, the FTSE 250 uh, mid-caps is... Um, uh, d down this morning a third of a percent, but again it's bullish on all three time frames. The DAX in Germany down 0.2 percent, and the CAC Courant down half percent. So we are just seeing uh, French stocks dragging uh, Europe down a little bit. Japan was actually up 0.6 percent overnight. Uh, the Hang Seng was down just under 1 percent, but still holding on to its short term bullish trend. Medium and long term still bearish, and the Chinese market actually was down 0.4 percent as well, just struggling to hold on there a bit as well. The the Sensex in India was up 0.4% and the Aussie market was virtually unchanged. Brent crude is down further this morning, down 0.4%, sitting at $59.50. So we are still in bearish territory on all three time frames, and WTI much the same picture. Uh, we have got some quite big downside targets here, but they need to be activated. Uh, so we'd need to fall really below fifty dollars, and then we'd be looking for very significant downside to the mid thirties. U.S. Nat Gas um, is sitting at uh, two twenty seven, so um, really just languishing at these levels uh, as well. Gold is up this morning on. Um, improved sentiment well d reduced sentiment in the uh, market for stocks and we are just seeing gold uh, coming up a little bit there sitting at 14.93 and silver uh, similarly up so these uh, precious metals now turning short term bullish US 10 year yield sitting at 1.8% we said we we'll actually come back to 1.74% and we're just rolling over a little bit turning us into short term bearish territory so you need to be aware of that and the bund um, we're seeing here 
uh, the German bond price just recovering a little bit this morning, so back to short term bearish. But we st we mentioned this head uh, bullish. We mentioned this head and shoulders pattern yesterday. That is just still a little bit of a worry. Uh, looking at the individual stocks now, um, if we start by looking at the world indices, we see it's mostly red. Uh, so most uh, stocks were down. Uh, looking at the Dow uh, 30, Procter and Gamble were the best performer, up three up. 2.6%. That trend for, since last year, really quite remarkable on Procter & Gamble. And uh, here we see outperforming the market by 20%. Uh, so really quite strong this year. Travelers Companies was the worst performer, down 8% yesterday. Uh, and that relative trend now just starting to break down. And we're seeing here, uh, we've rolled through the cloud and that's led to this big uh, sell-off. So we're seeing quite a big move there. Uh, taking a look at the NASDAQ 100, uh, the best performer was Biogen. They were up a massive 26%, but that's really just unwinding the big falls that we saw earlier in the year. Uh, still um, is a bearish stock despite that rise. Uh, and then on the uh, downside, the worst performer was Hasbro. They were down 16 percent and so uh, that's a really big fall on that chart as well no real warning there that just has just fallen out of bed but uh, that's that's changing the picture very dramatically for, for them taking a quick look at the Aussie market now um, we had wise tech Global, they're up 8.5%. That chart's still looking pretty good. And if we look at the downside, we've got Galaxy Resources down 7%. And that chart's still looking pretty bad. So the best performer looking great, the worst performer looking bad. The chart's confirming that. Uh, looking at India now, we've got uh, Icomotors Group. They're up 3%. And on the downside, we've got uh, Adani Ports down 5%. Uh, and now looking to Europe this morning, we have, um, first of all, the FTSE 100. Uh, if we go there, the best performer this morning is B B BATS, British American Tobacco Group, up 1.8%. The chart's still looking pretty dismal. Um, we've got Everaz next. And then if we go to the um, downside, Auto Trader Group down 3%. Uh, so that's falling away. Persimmon, the second worst performer. Uh, quite a lot of the house builders uh, coming off quite heavily this morning. Uh, you, uh, the FTSE 250, the mid-caps, uh, here we've got uh, Funding Circle Holdings, they're down, um, uh, they're up 5.7%. Uh, the chart not looking great though, the relative trend looking terrible. On the downside, CLS Holdings, they're down 3.6%, but the chart actually looking pretty reasonable. We're still good, good up to side targets here on CLS, um, but it has been quite a volatile uh, stock. Looking at Europe now, the top performers in Europe this morning, CRH Group in Ireland, they're up 0.8%. That chart's still holding on and looking pretty good. Any in Italy, the um, oil major, uh, actually up as well, but the chart not looking as good. And we see here the relative performance looking pretty grim. On the... Um, Downside, we've got SAP Group in um, Germany. They're uh, down 1.6%, but the, the chart actually looks pretty good. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.